four-way. Uh, I interviewed this uh, man last year. Uh, you've got a booth here in the uh, in the Buzz Lounge, talking about uh, basically uh, the founder and executive director of Datakind. Uh, you are a machine learning and technology enthusiast who loves nothing more than seeing good values in data. That's right. Couldn't have said it better myself. You founded Datakind in the hopes of creating a world in which every social organization has access to data capacity to better serve humanity. That sounds like a very tall order, but you're <laughs> delivering on this. We are, absolutely. We have created this nonprofit to basically work to bring data science to social impact. Uh, our mission is to harness the power of data science in the service of humanity. And so we've been doing that to basically take the same algorithms that are boosting profits in the private sector to help nonprofits, governments, and other institutions boost their social impact. And how's that going? I imagine that uh, you're a pretty popular guy with, with what you're trying to do here. Well, you know, that's one of the things that's been great about this is that people really do want to give back. You know, what we're seeing is that uh, our most successful model has been one in which data scientists give back almost like Doctors Without Borders for data geeks. Uh, they volunteer their time, whether just over a weekend or over six months, to work alongside nonprofits and social organizations to, to really harness innovative uses of data. So not just to do basic BI and analytics on a nonprofit's own data, but for example, to use the ubiquitous streams of data coming off of cell phones, laptops, satellite imagery, to instead build really innovative solutions that are helping save lives. Um, and Teradata and Datakind, they work together a lot, so uh, tell me how you do that and what kind of organizations you've worked with and helped. Absolutely. So Teradata has actually been a partner from the start. They uh, have been working with us for the past couple of years to uh, fund our data dives, which are kind of weekend level events like hackathons, where data scientists come together and work alongside social organizations. And, and aside from that, Teradata has really just been a great partner in the sense that they believe in doing data philanthropy and therefore giving back to using data for good. So we've been partnering on a number of efforts. Uh, one project that came out of that actually from last year's, or uh, Teradata sponsored Data Dive last year, was with a group called Crisis Text Line. And uh, Crisis Text Line uh, basically helps teens who are in need. Uh, you, teens no longer call those guidance counselor lines when they need help, they text, because teens text now. And uh, so they were having trouble figuring out how can we more efficiently get those teens the help that they need. So a number of volunteers came and actually analyzed the text messages, they looked at the kinds of things teens are asking for, they looked at predictive patterns, uh, and with the changes they made, they are able to prioritize the needs those teens got so that now Crisis Text Line estimates they can serve thousands of more teens every year just from those efforts. So those are the kinds of things that this Teradata partnership has brought us, been the resources to do those kinds of things and to just bring more good to people trying to use data. And it must time. be nice to see that impact where it's, it's a physical, you know, where you can see what the impact you've made on these organizations and the change you've helped. Absolutely. Um, so I know you guys had a data dive uh, this weekend uh, here in Anaheim. So tell me how that went and sort of what you did. Yeah, absolutely. So for the uninitiated, you know, data dives are uh, our 48-hour uh, style event that go on. And uh, those are, you know, th this happened right before the conference. And basically we were privileged to work with two fantastic nonprofits, Taproot Foundation, which provides pro bono services to other organizations, and KIPP LA, which is a set of charter schools that help kids get prepared for college readiness. And so we had over 60 people come to the event uh, and spend their time working alongside these nonprofits to analyze their, uh, their challenges, their objectives. And one of the things I really thought was great that came out of this event was uh, KIPP LA actually got to see things they had never seen before. So one of the things they really wanted to answer was, could we find indicators uh, of students that are in K through eight, of whether they're going to go to a top tier school, Cal State, UC, somewhere in that range, can we predict how well they're gonna do? And for the first time looking at this data of the you know, years that they've built up around this, this school performance, they were actually able to see that some early indicators of school performance were indicators for the long run of, for college readiness. And so now they can figure out how to train kids to get certain scores to help them be more college ready. Wow. So yeah, just in, and the cool thing is just in 24 hours. Right. So you what know? can you do with even more time? Exactly. What if they had more time for that? Um, so it's really great to see that, and great to see people so excited coming out to work alongside these groups. Um, you know, and, and actually, that's really what we often say is that it's less about the projects and more about the people. So much of this is communication and collaboration. Uh, that it, we actually brought a video uh, from one of our volunteers who served as a data ambassador which uh, sets the data up for one of these projects ahead of time. Uh, so if we have that, I'd love to actually just show uh, a clip from Alicia Getz and see. A data dive is kind of like a hackathon is for programming, but we do it for data analysis. So we get together for 48 hours pretty much and just 
have volunteers come and they get into the data, they do whatever analytics they can, they explore the data, we do correlations, um, relationships, we can do text analysis, all kinds of cool things that the data geeks love to do and so it's, it's just great to be able to do that. The great thing about these data dives is that you can be at different skill levels. Like me, I'm not a data analyst or data scientist. I came more from an organizational perspective, organizing, um, project managing, and things like that. For the volunteers that come in, we can give them something as easy as uh, using Excel to just come up with some simple charts. Um, to as advanced as doing end path analysis and correlations and using tools like R and SAS and things that I, have, I know nothing about. The charities are so appreciative of the time that we put in. They really are. Um, you know, in most cases, they don't have a big data organization. So for them, it's just such a great opportunity to get a room full of experts to really do something that either they can't do it would take them a long, lot longer to do. I was so looking forward to this year's partners. Um, just from having done the data dive in the past, I wanted to do it this year. And in fact, even if uh, my team hadn't selected me to come, I would have made the trip out here just for the data dive. That's, that's how much I really enjoyed and it was so rewarding. I cannot wait until next year to be able to get involved again with another data dive. I've done two of them and I'm going for three. All right, so now we know about the data dive. What happens after that? Well, I think that's one of the great things about these events is that they're just the beginning. Every time we have these events, volunteers come out saying, how do I do more of this? Organizations say, how do we continue this work on? So at DataKind, we actually provide a number of services beyond just the weekend events, including our data core, where people can volunteer for up to six months part-time working with organizations, uh, to our chapter efforts. So we actually have chapters in New York, San Francisco, DC, UK, Dublin, Singapore, and Bangalore. Uh, so those communities of data scientists and nonprofits in those cities are continuing a lot of that work forward. And so that's uh, very exciting for us to see this start in the weekend, but continue on from there. Now, I know you've got your booth here in the, uh, the Buzz Lounge here in Anaheim, but uh, you know, we've got all these folks watching online from all over the world. Um, you've got a Data for Good pledge, and you can actually just text in to help out. Tell me about that. That's right. Well, we really wanted to give people an opportunity to give back no matter where they were and how they could get involved. So right now, we are alongside Teradata offering an opportunity to get your own Data for Good survival kit. All you have to do is text data for good that's data with a for good, all one word, to 99,000. Uh, and that will send you back a text with an email address so you can sign up for our Data for Good Survival Kit. And what you'll find in there are ways to get involved with competitions, with other groups, uh, ways that you can give back to DataKind. Um, because the thing that we're really seeing is that beyond our efforts at DataKind, this really is becoming a Data for Good movement. Many others are doing that. We want to provide as many opportunities for people to give back any way they could through that. So please do take the Data for Good pledge, show you're committed to using your skills for good, and text Data for Good to 99,000. Okay, and um, how can folks get involved? Maybe they want to help out, they want to join a chapter. How do they get involved with what you're doing? Absolutely. There are tons of ways to get involved with us. Very first thing to do is steer yourself to datakind.org, where you can sign up for our mailing list and keep apprised of the various events we're having or other opportunities to get involved. Um, as you mentioned, there are chapters around the world. Uh, they are most prominent on meetup.com. If you check for uh, the Datakind Bangalore chapter, for example, you see all the events we have there. The events are tons of fun, by the way. Even if you don't consider yourself a data scientist or don't know whether you're ready to do data for good, they're just really friendly, awesome people to go hang out with who want to do you know, data and tech for good. So please come on by there. And then, of course, we're always hiring for new positions. We are actually an uh, early announcement, going to be putting up some posts soon for a full-time Data for Good fellow to work on some large projects. So if you check out datakind.org slash careers, keep your eye on that page, or you could even just come work with us directly. Are we breaking news right here? At there you the, go, uh, I know, it's exclusive. I think we just got some uh, great news from you guys. <laughs> um, and uh, tell me about the, uh, if folks want to partner with you. Oh, How can they do that? Well, yeah, one of the things that we really believe in is that this is a, you know, a movement in the truest sense. And that means that everyone has a way to contribute. Whether you are a data scientist who wants to give back or a nonprofit who needs help, we also see that foundations, corporations have a huge opportunity to get involved. So we're always looking for partners who believe in moving the needle forward and using data and technology for measurable impact. So we'd love uh, more corporate partners who are interested in either you know, talking about how to do thought leadership with us or give resources to do our work. 
foundations, universities, governments, anyone, basically any organization that you work with or for absolutely has a place in this movement. Please reach out to us on our website. We'd love to have you in the movement with us. And Jake, what keeps you so um, enthusiastic and engaged <laughs> throughout all this? You have so much energy, and it's exciting, and it's contagious. So what, what drives What's you through secret? all this? Yeah, well, there's free coffee at the conference. <laughs> I'm on, like, cup eight, so that's great. Um, but no, in, in all honesty, I know it sounds corny, but uh, it's just, I find this incredibly exciting. I mean, this is not just volunteering in the sense that you're going to roll out to a, a soup kitchen because you should, because you feel good. This is a data revolution. We are changing the way all of humanity looks at data, from instrumenting uh, you know, our skies with satellites to our bodies with sensors. This is not just something fun to do, which it is, and it's not just something that feels good to do. It very much marks a new age of reason, where humanity is going to have data to make better sense of how we do things. And I don't know how anyone couldn't be excited about that. It's revolutionary times, and we can all be a part of it. Um, tell me about one of the times when you saw what you're doing. When you, I mean, some, how long have you been doing this? Well, Datacon has been around three years. Okay. Yeah. So, so, what was like your first like realization that you're doing something really cool? Oh man, uh, there's so many. It's it's so funny you mentioned that. Um, I think actually one of the revelations was one of the events that had us start this in the first place. The idea had been kind of kicking around, but there were all these questions. You know, would data scientists want to give back? Would nonprofits be ready to use machine learning and, and analytics? And I was at an event, sort of popping the idea around when a woman ran in and said, holding up a thumb drive enthusiastically and said, <laughs> I've got data about every Ugandan health clinic out there. Don't ask me how I got it, but I've got it, but what could I do with this? I don't even know where to start. And so over the next 20 minutes, myself and some other data scientists sat down and just looked through it and said, well, here's some options. You know, we'd have to explore this further, but you could compare clinic levels. You could do X, Y, Z to improve uh, vaccine transmission. Uh, and the, the look on her face when she heard this, the, real, the kind of aha moment to think, oh, this sounds like sci-fi, I could actually use this to help lives immediately, just made me realize this is, this is something huge. And that has been verified every day since, even when we started it as sort of a slow rollout in New York, when we had hundreds of people around the world write and say, I'm going to do data kind in my country, I want data kind Australia, data kind New Zealand, data kind uh, Berlin. Um, all of this has just been confirmation that people really have this thirst to give back. There's an opportunity to do good, and all it takes is just stepping up and wanting to do it. Um, and I've been asking a lot of the folks that come up here um, what this breaking big theme means to them, and I think to you it's going to mean something different than a lot of the other analysts and things. So what does that uh, the theme of this year's show mean to you? Uh, Hadoop. Just about Hadoop. I'm just kidding. It's, <laughs> I think the uh, thing really for me when I hear big, to me the big and big data means expansive. You know, it's obviously we can talk about the volume and, and velocity, et cetera, but to me it's, it's the fact that it's touching everyone's lives. You know, algorithms are shaping the way we make decisions, and increasingly groups you don't think of as tech companies, like social organizations and nonprofits, are now producing volumes of data, whether it's because they're using cell phones to deliver health services or satellite imagery to monitor crop yields. This big, this breaking big to me is the fact that we are breaking beyond industry, beyond just what we've thought of as customer insights and are now realizing that we can use this for human insights. That's very exciting. I like that. Uh, and do you get to have some fun while you're here in Anaheim at all? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, aside from the data dive over the weekend, which was pretty fun, you know, I may uh, see if we can stop by Disneyland. Um, I've heard they actually have some pretty interesting data analysis programs for figuring out how people go through the park. Can you but, imagine how much data that they have oh at, uh, it's, that they collect on a minute-by-minute -minute basis? It must be crazy. I, I can only imagine, especially they've got those tracking things now. Yeah, the, the new magic bands. Yeah, or the, exactly. The My Ma or whatever they call them, but uh, yeah, they've got uh, all kinds of stuff going on yeah, there. But I and, think I'll leave work at home and just hit Magic Mountain. Yeah, I was going to say, there. just do something fun while yeah. you're there. And we get Collective Soul on Wednesday night. So oh, that, nice. That should be fun, too. There we go. That'll um, be great. All right, uh, Jake Porway, thank you so much. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, to tell them how to get uh, Absolutely. Twitter, Facebook, all those good things. Sure, check us out, datakind.org. On Twitter, we are at datakind. Uh, if you have questions just for me about anything related to data or how that Disneyland trip was, I am Jake Porway, P-O-R-Way, on Twitter. Okay, thanks so much. All and, right. of course, you can stop by the booth here in the uh, Buzz Lounge. Of course. Uh, do you know what hall we're in? I'm not even sure. It's like We are in the Expo Hall. Expo Hall. So yes. there we go. Expo You're hard hall. to miss. Okay, so uh, thanks so much for joining us Lenders today. Thank you all mine. Appreciate all right. it.